Peace engineering provides a new frame to look at engineering and sciences. For a lot of young people, they get turned off by STEM because it's a little bit too technical and abstract. By providing this lens of peace engineering and peace innovation, it attracts more comers. It attracts more people who care about the social impact. And they say, now I have a reason to learn engineering skills because I see that as a means to attain a social outcome that I care about very deeply. So we're really focused on technologies that augment people's ability to positively engage with each other across difference boundaries. That's the leveraging mechanism here and that's why it's an engineering approach. But those technologies, you can always see person A with some group uh, identities and person B with some different group identities. And that technology enabled them to engage either at a level of quality or, or even an episode of engagement that couldn't have happened without the technology. Peace engineering and peace innovation is important right now because technology touches every aspect of our lives, from AI and robotics, Internet of Things. Engineers are no longer in a position where they say, I just invent things and whatever happens downstream is somebody else's problem. And so what we need to do is bring some of that sensibility in the creation and development of new technologies. We need to be aware of the social and economic impact, and we need to have engineering curriculum updated to reflect that. The future for peace engineering next step is a standardized data format so that any organization anywhere in the world can see not only how good they are being to all their stakeholders and where they can improve that, but they can also see best practices from everybody else and how to adopt and replicate those best practices in their organization. That standard improves our ability to function across the board as a society.